Do you want to talk about the beginning of the move to value? And I guess you're pulling the plug on this type of uh, action that we're seeing and all the momentum uh, plays that have led the market uh, in the past year or so. My question is, you're pulling the plug. Did you have the plug in? Did you own anything? Did you own Tesla? Do you, do you own any of the, the stocks you're now saying not to own anymore? Do you own any Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin, I, I definitely did not participate in the Bitcoin trade, you know, in all fairness. But growth has always been in our portfolio. You mentioned Tom Lee. I think I was one of the only other people on your network back in April saying that we're going to have a V-shaped recovery. And that's really when the easy money was made, when nobody believed that the market was going to recover. You know, I remember Goldman Sachs said S&P at 3,000 at the end of the year. Uh, earnings estimates back then were completely off. GDP was down way less than everyone expected on Wall Street. So I think the big money here, Joe, has been made, right? I mean, Tesla up over seven, 800 percent, wherever it is today, um, you know, the reality of it is, you know, most of that trend is probably over at this point. If you look at it historically, the S&P 500 is up, up over 50 percent over the last two years. It's very hard to put another double digit return behind that. It's only happened five times since 1928. And as the economy is reopened and really look at, you know, back in November when the vaccine news came out, value's been outperforming growth by about like six percent over the last three months. Yeah. So that rotation's already starting to happen. And you think it's going to continue? You, you point out Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Alphabet may have all peaked uh, versus, uh, well, the rest of, uh, versus the rest of the market. The, the, you say, in fact, investors should sell the S&P 500. The reopening of the economy will result in a broadening of the rally with a rotation away from mega cap tech. But why sell the S&P? You're saying it's a broadening of the rally, but you're using the word rally. Is, it, is the over, are the overall averages going up? You just think you should emphasize value now versus growth? Yeah, the other problem, too, with the S&P 500, um, you know, I, I came up with a new acronym over the holidays after too much eggnog, and that's fat gam. Now, the six stocks that basically drive the performance of the S&P 500, you know, Facebook, Apple, Tesla now in there, Microsoft, Apple, Google, they account for 24 percent of the index. And the reality of it is they don't really participate in the reopening of the, econ the economy, per se. You know, those stocks are already trading at you know, extremely high multiples. They've got regulation issues coming down the pipeline. And the reality of it is they benefit the most from us being locked inside. You know, I don't think we're going to be ordering more stuff off Amazon when the economy reopens. And I think, you know, the bottom line is, you know, you're at a point now where if you want to participate in that reopening of the economy, well, you've got to own old school stocks that you're not really going to get that exposure. Even though there's another 494 stocks in the S&P 500, they're just not, you know, the, the weighting representation so low there that you're not really going to get that reopening trade like you own value stocks. So the uh, you like energy. Among other things, you like uh, you like small caps. Also, small caps have been participating to some extent. No, it's up 100 percent since uh, the bottom in March. But you got to also remember they did nothing for two years, right, from 2018 to 2020 or around November. Um, you know, those markets were pretty much sideways. And you start looking at like commodities; they've been in a bear market now for years. Energy is still like 70 percent below prices that you had in 2014. So a lot of these sectors are actually just coming out of a bear market. Whereas if you look at growth, you know, growth's been at the zenith now, um, you know, really building over the last couple of years. And you start looking at multiples historically, they're just so high. And you and I know, Joe, you know, remember back in 99, 2000, it didn't end well, right? You know, eventually when multiples get that high, if you bought the S&P at the peak back in 2000, it took you to 2013 to start making money in the S&P 500 again. So it's okay to be a little earlier.